Welcome back to part two of the Summer Spectacular. In this moment from Yu-Gi-Oh! GX 12 by Rame's creator, we get a not-so-flattering look at what a certain character will do. You know, I heard that Harrington's nickname is the Swiss Army Knife of Love. I know I'm going to regret, but why is he called that? Because he's prepared to do just about anything and he's packing a lot. Okay, even by my standards, that's disgusting. I move that in real conversation, comparing the intimate arts to hardware in the Home Depot sense of the word should be avoided. Unless you're someone, of course, who gets, uh, you know what? Let's move on. In this moment from Yu-Gi-Oh! GX9 by Rame's creator, the only video creator, by the way, to have two back-to-back -back moments on the countdown, we see Bastion fail to quite finish that classic theorem. You know, now that I think about it, you two are the first living things that have ever visited me. And now I know why. Yeah, I came to this school to get away from math. Oh yeah, these are just my formulas. That one over there is for spells, that one right there is for traps, and my most precious one over there is for girls. I haven't solved it yet. Yes, Bastion, math sometimes cannot get to the heart of the mystery of the opposite sex, oddly enough. But, nice proof, even my TFs would like it. In this moment from Lultron 2 by Darren Forrest, we see very loud, very unnecessary literary devices. I think we better form Lultron now. You can't do that. Why not? We got the lions, the assembly instructions, and the spandex uniform. That's because the original Japanese animators decided it would be more dramatic to let you form Voltron in the next episode instead. Also, you need the keys. I thought they were lights, not cars. It almost makes me fish I ever did. Hey, he said almost. In this composite moment from DBZ by Team Four Star, a certain character just gets hated on. Constantly. So you're his brother, huh? Wow, that must mean you'll be involved in a lot of future events, right? Right? <laughs> what did I say? I didn't go on by. Quick! Somebody stop him! Damn it, Roshi! Shut up, Krillin. Any questions? Um, yeah, I got- <laughs> As a semi-serious question, since I may be the only person in this whole community who doesn't know DBZ from their rear end, does Krillin really deserve this abuse? Because if so, this is mind-blowingly hilarious. And if he doesn't, it's even better. In this moment from Yu-Gi-Oh! Abridged Episode 29 by Little Karibo, a character breaks out of his comfort zone of ineffectuality. The next card is- Hold it right there, cheaters! <laughs> The only person who gets away with cheating is my big brother. It almost hurts to even see the words Epic and Mokuba that close together. And now it's time for war video number five. In this video with Taka, Kaiser, and the Overlord, we see Taka betray his comrades in the council to a new friend who seems much more powerful. For future groups of abridgers, let me give you a crash course on how not to let your group fall apart like this. First off, pick a name that the good guys get. Think allies, alliance, the rebellion. Picking a word like council that just begs to have the word evil before it is kind of asking for trouble. Going with Axis is, to glancingly invoke Godwin's Law, completely and utterly out of the question. I hope to see you next time for the next five moments of the Summer Spectacular. I'd rather be nine people's favorite thing than a hundred people's ninth favorite thing. Nine people's favorite thing than a hundred people's ninth favorite thing. Those nine people will tell nine people Then we'll have eighteen people loving the show Then eighteen people
people could grow into 525,600 people All love in our show